Welcome to the video homework for topic 6.13, part B, aldol condensation. Before attempting the problems in this homework, I recommend that you read lesson 6.13, specifically pages 148 to 149, in the Organic Chemistry 2 Primer 2018 by Professors Tennyson, Hujiri, and Smith. Our first question asks us to provide an arrow pushing mechanism that leads to the aldol addition product. Now, the aldol addition is a reaction that we call type A in this primer where you simply have a nucleophilic addition step shown here, and that pushes a minus charge up onto the oxygen, and generally the second step is simply protonation to lead to the formation of an alcohol. Now the aldol addition is a specific case of this, where you first have to make your nucleophile, nucleophile shown in red, and that enolate nucleophile does the nucleophilic addition I mentioned on the previous slide, and then once you've pushed the minus charge onto that oxygen, you will get a proton from, in this case, water that's present in the reaction solution. So that's the general mechanism. If we take a look at our carbonyl, and we remember that you have to deprotonate in alpha position, then a hydroxide ion will pull off an alpha proton to form this enolate. Once formed, this nucleophile will undergo nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl to form this intermediary species, which then gets protonated to give us our final product. Notice that in this particular case, we did generate a chiral center. And we would expect a racemic mixture. The next problem asks us to provide the major products of an aldol condensation rather than an aldol addition. To remind you of the general mechanism for the aldol condensation, recall that you first do the aldol addition. We get the aldol addition product. In a second step, we will deprotonate the alpha position of that carbonyl that already served as the nucleophile. And then we will be able to do elimination of the hydroxide leaving group to form this double bond. So the net result is that whatever we used as the nucleophile, the nucleophilic carbon, here will end up doubly bound to this carbon that used to be the carbonyl carbon. So our first step is to identify which site will become the nucleophilic site. Well, in this case, there's only one alpha site that has protons. So there's only one usable alpha site to be made into a nucleophile. And now I've color-coded that nucleophilic site as red, and here's the alpha position that got deprotonated. You do nucleophilic addition, and then you do protonation. Then you deprotonate this alpha position of the nucleophile again, and push those electrons into this space to make a double bond, and you'll push this hydroxide out as a leaving group. One other thing I should point out is that you know that the alkene has cis, trans, E, and Z isomers, and you want to make the most stable one. So this tertiary butyl group is pretty sterically encumbering. You want to put that adjacent to this small hydrogen, not next to this large group over here. So this is the correct isomer as shown. You might also be asked about an aldol reaction in the opposite direction. And you'll be given a specific target and asked, which reagents do I need to acquire the target by the aldol condensation. So we again sketch down in our scratch paper or just remember what the general mechanism for the aldol condensation is. The net result is that the alpha position of one carbonyl, which we track through to be here, ends up doubly bound to the site that used to be the carbonyl carbon of the other coupling partner. So if we look at this molecule, we can identify that this is the alkene unit that was formed. The alkene has to be at a position starting alpha to one of the carbonyls. So if we think about it, the nucleophilic piece is the one that maintains its CO double bond in the product. We can see that if we follow this species all the way through the reaction. The CO double bond stays in the nucleophilic piece that I've color-coded in red. And that means that this other piece on the left, shown in blue, had to be the original carbonyl coupling partner. So if we use this retrosynthetic arrow and think backwards and say this target molecule could have been made from this carbonyl and this other carbonyl with alpha protons, 
that would be the correct thought process. Now, allocondensation can also occur intramolecularly. So instead of two separate carbonyl species reacting with one another to form one molecule, you can take two carbonyl functional groups that happen to be attached to each other by some type of linker and do an allocondensation between the two. Again, you want to consider the general mechanism and say, well, we have to identify alpha position that will act as a nucleophile. In the current case, we have alpha carbons here, 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 and here. And if we modify our general mechanism to say, well, what would this look like if we did an intramolecular version? I would still color code the nucleophilic piece in red. I would color code the piece that gets attacked as being blue. And I've just used this dotted line in between the two to represent some kind of linker. So in the current case, this would be that dotted green line. So in the product, you'll have some sort of cyclic structure with a double bond in it. Now, if you're going to form a ring, you want to make sure that you're forming a non-strained ring preferentially. So in this case, we have two possibilities. We could use the alpha position at one of the ends. And if that occurred when it went and attacked the other carbonyl, you would make a cyclic structure with these six atoms in it. So a six-membered ring is very favorable. That's something that we might consider to be a favorable reaction. If we use the alpha carbon at the interior part of the molecule, not right at the end, you would have to make a four-membered ring in order to close up your cycle and have the alpha carbon attack the carbonyl carbon. A four-membered ring is pretty strained, so we will rule that out. So we've identified the correct nucleophilic site. We deprotonate this side using the base, so that enolate will be attracted to the carbonyl carbon of this other carbonyl. And I've color-coded in red and numbered 1 through 6 so that you can match up the atoms in the starting material over here with those in this initially formed aldol product. Well, we were asked for the aldol condensation product. So we would have to take our hydroxide and deprotonate this so we would get an enolate here. And then that negative charge will push the OH group off as a leaving group. And you'd have this as your final product.